In this video, we're going to learn a very famous example of a markup chain. It's called a random walk. A famous example. This is also textbook example uh, 4.19, which is random walk. First, we consider the state space. The state space is actually all the integers, not just positive. It's zero, plus or minus one, plus or minus two, etc. Uh, if uh, we draw this diagram of state. And we can use the diagram to represent. For example, we start from the state zero. And let's say we have little p that much chance to uh, move to state one. Basically, we have every time if we want to move to the right by one unit, we have a probability of p to do that. All right. So similarly, if from minus one to zero, we have a p. This is going to happen from minus one. All right. And similarly, so if we want to move left by one unit, its probability is 1 minus p. So we have this uh, very interesting diagram of states. And now uh, what we uh, want to do is we want to classify. So our goal is to classify. state zero. Our goal is basically determine whether the sum, which is a transition probability from state zero to state zero uh, at n step is is infinity or uh, finite. So if it's infinity, it's recurrent. If it's uh, less infinity, it means our state zero is transient. And in fact, uh, we'll later learn um, if one state in this random walk is recurrent, it means every state is recurrent. And now let's uh, first compute this probability. And let's consider when n is an odd number. And this is uh, the probability of uh, x two k minus one is zero, given x zero is zero. Without loss of generality, let's assume k equals one. This is the equivalent of computing. So in the case of k equals one, this probability equals x one is zero and x zero is zero. Apparently this is zero because what happens is uh, given x zero is zero, then we have x one is one, which means we move one step to the right is little p and 
the probability if we move one step to the left is one minus this little p. We have zero probability of staying still. That's why uh, this is zero. And similar things happens. Uh, we can derive that uh, similar things happens when our number of steps is odd, which means this 2k minus one step transition probability is zero um, for any odd number of steps. And now let's consider a even number of steps, all right? So let's compute uh, this guy. This one is uh, the probability of x 2k is zero given initially uh, we start at zero and k equals one, two, three, etc. This one is kind of interesting because we'll use our uh, to compute this probability, let's think about uh, we're flipping a coin, all right? This is like a thought experiment. So uh, a thought experiment is we're flipping a coin, all right? The head has probability p and uh, tail has probability 1 minus p. If we flip a head, all right, we move to the right by one step. And if we flip a tail, we move left by one step. What happens is uh, we just converted this probability to a coin flipping problems. Because if after 2k steps, or say 2k coin flippings, we're still at zero, it means, this means we're computing the probability of among these 2k, among 2k flips of coin, we have 1k heads and uh, 1k tail. All right. And this one is nothing but we use our famous binomial distribution. And let me add this little remark here. We use binomial distribution. This is nothing but if we have 2k flips and we have 1k heads, it's 2k choose k, those many combinations, and multiply with. Uh, the probability of success, which is, let's say, a p raised to the kth power and times 1 minus p uh, raised to the kth power. And what happens is we want to, essentially, we want to sum up uh, this one. But this one is actually quite hard to sum up because we have k here. If we're summing up k, uh, the k will be here and also here. To sum this up, we'll use a famous Sterling approximation. That is, uh, when k is large, k factorial is approximately k raised to the k 
to the k plus one half power and e to the minus k then multiply with a square root of uh, two pi. This is uh, saying, uh, this is saying uh, this limit. When k goes to infinity, this k factorial divided by k raised to the k plus one half power e to the minus k to pi is one. If we use this uh, Stirling approximation, so let me add a box here. Let's continue to compute um, this one when, when, when k is large. So when k is large, What happens is we would like to use Stirling approximation for this probability. If we write explicitly what this probability is, it's 2k factorial divided by k factorial times k factorial, then p to the kth power times 1 minus p to the kth power. All right, now let's plug in the Stirling approximation, 2k raised to the 2k plus uh, one half power and e to the negative uh, two k power multiply with uh, a constant. And in the denominator, we have two k factorial, which means king square. So it is k raised to the k plus one half power e to the negative k and square root of two pi square. Then we multiply with p raised to the kth power one minus p raised to the kth power. And if we write it down explicitly, we will find that uh, lots of uh, term cancels. For example, this uh, e to the negative k raised to the square, uh, it cancels with uh, this one due to this uh, square. And, uh, and we have an extra copy of uh, square root of uh, two pi right here. And for this one, what we have uh, is, 2k raised to the 2k plus half power, but divided by k raised to the k plus one half power square is nothing but k raised to the 2k plus one multiply with one over square root of two pi and here it's p times one minus p raised to the kth power. If we look more closely, we'll find that we can isolate this two out from this two k plus one half power. It's what happens is we have this k raised to the two k plus one half power divided by k raised to the 2k plus 1 power multiply with 1 over square root of 2 pi and then we have this 2 to the 2k plus 1 half power factor and this is p times 1 minus p raised to the k power. The first term becomes one over square root k. And this term is four raised to the kth power times square root of two. And this is square root of two divided by pi. And then this is p times one minus p raised to the kth power, which means this is nothing but, uh, we move this four to the kth power into this p times one minus p. 
uh, to the k power. What we have is 4 times p times 1 minus p raised to the k power divided by, we have a square root of k. And right here, square root of the 2 cancels, and we have a pi. We have a square root of a pi k. And because we're letting due to we're letting k going to infinity, uh, what happens is we don't care about finitely many sums. We only care um, the tail of this this probability which is uh, k from 0 to infinity, uh, p0, 0, 0 of 2k. This one is a part of n from 0 to infinity, uh, the transition prob instead transition probability, um, pn, because the other part is 0. This one. And this series right here, and we let k starts, let's say, because there is a square root here, and this is when k is large, let's say k starts from 1 to infinity. Square root of uh, pi k, 4 times p times 1 minus p, uh, to the kth power. These two have the same behavior when k is large. It means they converge or diverge at the same time. So, what happens is we'll review some of a series of infinite series. So we'll review uh, some of the infinite series we learned uh, back in calculus. So infinite series. And this is about P series. Let's first look at this. When K equals 1 to infinity, and we sum up 1 over square root of k. Apparently, this diverges. I mean, this is bigger than the famous diverging harmonic theory. Another one is uh, if we have an alpha raised to the kth power divided by square root of k. This one, when k is 1 and till infinity, this one is apparently less than, strictly less than, this series. And when alpha is between negative 1 and 1. This is a convergent geometric series, which means this series is less than a convergent series, it's uh, converging as well. Now let's look back at this term right here. All right, so uh, let's consider this uh, probability it's p times 1 minus p right here. And this is for p is between 0 and 1. By simple calculus, we take derivative with respect to p. We'll find that this is 1 minus 2p. We set it to be 0. We get p equals 1 half. So it achieves max at p equals 1 half. And this max value is... Uh, 
is a quarter because we plug in uh, one half, we get a quarter. And this implies four times P times one minus P is actually less than we get a one. Because uh, a, qu uh, this, a quarter is a maximum value of P times uh, 1 minus P. So a quarter is the maximum value of P times 1 minus P. And uh, this means for P times 1 minus P is 1 only if when p is one half and if this is one so on top we'll have this series is divergent only if when p is one half and this case it means so zero is a recurrent state and otherwise no matter your p is greater than half or little p is less than half but p has to be between 0 and 1 this implies 0 is a transient state because when p is greater than half or p is less than half uh, these two both imply this one will be strictly less than one and then the series will be a convergent series and the sum is a finite number therefore zero is a transient state so lastly uh, we have an actually have a name uh, for p equals half this is called a symmetric random walk And for a random walk with the state being 0, plus or minus 1, uh, plus or minus 2, with no walls, we have the following fact. That is, it doesn't matter we have 0 or others. This is a, a qualitative statement. So 0 is no different from other states what I mean is uh, if we look back at the diagram all right if from zero we move to this one right here it's like this random walk start over because we can treat this state as a new starting state and we know that uh, we have p probability p uh, go to the right state or we have probability 1 minus p go to the left state so without knowing this state is 1 we actually do not know where we are okay so every state looks the same and what this uh, intuition tells us is uh, if zero is recurrent then all states are recurrent and similarly, if zero is transient, 
than all states are transient. <laughs> 